today, folks. So we're going to start in a seated position. I have some yoga blocks here. Whoop. They are not required, um, but they're just helpful. If you don't have some yoga blocks, you can use um, some pillows or folded up blankets. Good. And we're going to sit, sit up here. Can everybody see me OK? Nice. Thumbs up on Zoom. All you Twitch people following along. Great. If you're, you're just uh, if you're just hanging out, watching, feel free. Um, I'll be looking at the chat, too. If you have any questions about any of the yoga poses or anything like that, uh, do feel free to ask. Um, I want this to be interactive. So once you find a seated position that feels comfortable for you, it doesn't need to look like this. Any sort of seated cross-legged position will do. Hands will be on the thighs and we'll sit up really, really tall here. Hopefully you can see that side cam. I'm trying to get a nice straight spine. It's as if you've got a hook on the crown of your head whoop, being pulled up to the sky. We'll draw the chin down into the chest to lengthen the back of the neck. And let's just take a few moments to breathe here. We're going to take our conscious breaths, really taking our time to breathe all the way into the belly. Imagine a balloon expanding in all directions. And we exhale nice and long. Inhale, filling all the way up. See if you can feel different parts of your trunk expanding as you fill the lungs with air. And really take your time with the exhale. Even if you're just following along and you're just kind of sitting in your chair watching, even just this breath work can be, you can join in on the practice just simply breathing, even if you're not moving. And so these long, deep breaths, they can calm our system down. So as we go through some poses or as things get stressful, we can always come back to this style of breathing to begin grounding the body. And if you've got your eyes closed, we can just visualize how all the ribs expand out as we fill up the belly, all directions, just grows big, 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 big. And we'll exhale from there. Good. Now we'll keep this breath going through the practice today. Let's just start moving a little bit. Draw the chin down to the chest. And slowly take those head into circles there. Thanks, pumpkin. Always, uh, always feel free to lurk in this channel. No problem at all. So we're going really slow here, and and I, I, Laura, I like this. You've got her, she's got her hand. I can see her on Zoom. She's got her hand kind of on the collarbone, and it's like you're you're pulling the muscles of the neck downward, and so it can add like a little bit of an extra stretch up the muscles of the front of the neck there. And we're not just mindlessly moving the head around. We are, we are moving the neck with a sense of curiosity. What do we notice? Where might it be tighter than the other parts of the neck? Is there pain? Do we need to address any sort of pain patterns that are going on here? Let's go in the other direction. way up and around. We're going to be a little more upper body focused today. Tuesdays have kind of been more lower body emphasis. Taking it slow. Good. Let's come bring it back to center with the neck. Let's bring arms down by your side. We're going to get really tall through the neck. Inhale. As you exhale, let's turn the head over to the right. Trying to stay as tall as possible and you're looking to aim your chin over your shoulder if you can get it there. It may feel nice to hold here. Some of you might want to explore by looking up towards the ceiling 
upward down towards the floor with that rotation. Move slowly, don't force anything here. If there's any pain, you can always back out. With any of my classes here, these are just suggestions. If it doesn't feel good in your body, you don't have to do it. Good. Your own personal consent. Nice. Let's come back to center here. Let's go over to the other side. So we're taking our head. Inhale. Get a little bit longer. Exhale. We're turning over to the left. Oh, hi there, camera. Side cam. I see you over there. So we're going to squeeze a little bit more. See if you can aim that chin over the shoulder. And we can go up and down. Right? I'm just exploring the range of motion through the neck at this specific angle. Again, approaching it with a sense of curiosity. How does it feel on the left side compared to the right? We're up and we're down. And again, if there's any pain, I'll always say you don't have to do this. You can back off a little bit if it's still painful we can just discontinue. You can watch along and then catch up when we, we're doing something that feels a little better in your body. Good. Let's bring that neck back to center. The arms are out to a T. I call this move the ringing of the towel. You'll see how that comes into play here. So we're going to grab fists. And again, if you're just seated at your desk, you can do this as well. We're going to turn the right fist down and the left fist up and we squeeze into that rotation. Notice I'm even shifting over towards my left palm. We inhale, come back through center. We're unwinding the arms. Exhale, opposite direction. Right fist up, left fist down. Good. I love this move here. I do it all the time. And so you'll find a natural stopping point where your arms don't want to rotate anymore, but you can add a little bit of your own muscular squeeze ugh, to get that last bit of rotation. Hence the name, wringing of the towel. Right? We can imagine a little hand towel and you're trying to get all of that water out. If you twist it enough, it'll get a lot of the water out. But if you give it that nice tight ugh, squeezing, we'll get that, um, we'll get the last bit of moisture out there. Nice. Let's come back to center here. Thumbs are gonna connect to the shoulders, right? We do this one all the time here in class. We're taking those elbows for a swim. Big movements here. And again, these can be done in your chair if you're just following along there. We're going nice and slow. And Laura, see if you can make these a little bit bigger. Notice how I'm, I'm taking my whole trunk into rotation with there. Yes, because it forces us to come around forward. And that back arm reaches back, so we're getting more movement of the shoulder blade across the back of the rib cage. Nice. So I'm feeling muscles warming up between my shoulder blades as we've made this a little bit bigger. Exactly. Let's go backwards. So I'm taking it into a backstroke. I'm trying to create as big a circle with my elbow as possible. Yes, there we go. Nice. So you're adding a little bit more rotation through the trunk. Wonderful. Good. Just one or two more here. Excellent. Let's just shake those shoulders out. While we're seated, let's do a little bit of movement. So this is kind of an upright cat cow, if you're familiar. Arms are going to reach out in front of you. As you inhale, open wide. You can see in the side cam, I'm sending my chest forward. I'm looking up. Spinal extension is what we call this. And exhale, I turn my thumbs down. Backs of the palms come together. And I try to push my shoulder blades as far back behind me as I can. Good. Inhale, big open. Looking up. Exhale. We'll do two more of these here. Woo. Nice. Last one. Yeah. Good. Let's go. Inhale. Back to center. Reach the arms up tall. And exhale. Let's side bend over to the right. We're going to do our little floor sweep move here in just a moment. We're building up to it. 
We've got a right side bend here, feeling the ribs open up. See if you can pull those fingertips out even more. I like to imagine half, like halfway down my rib cage, I've got a little hook there, and that's being pulled up towards the sky, giving us a little bit more of that lateral side bend of the spine. Let's come up. Inhale, both arms reach. Exhale, over to the side. Ah. Same deep, long breaths that we started with here. Feel where you're tight, where you're limited, and try to send your breath into that spot. So here, I'm gonna try to breathe in between each one of my right ribs. Ah, looking very good there. Good, so let's inhale, come up again. This time as we exhale, we're coming back down to that right side bend. And then keep going. We're gonna bring that left hand down to the floor. Boop, now both hands. Now we're sweeping across the ground there. Once, that, once we get all the way over to the left side, that right arm reaches up. Good, and we're gonna just flow through this a couple of times. I'm gonna close that right hand back down to the floor, sweep my arms across the ground and I'm in this nice side bend. We've done this in the class before. I just really like it. It's real mellow. They call me mellow yellow. Just appreciating all of this movement here. Good. We'll do one, one or two more here. Really feeling unlocked out of the thoracic spine. Good. So once you get to the middle here, we're gonna roll over hands and knees and we'll come into our all fours position. I'm gonna move my block off to the side there. Good, I got everything here. Let's move a little bit through the shoulder blades from this all fours position. We're gonna take those shoulder blades through some circles here. I'm going really slow. I'm trying to make them as big as I can. Whew. Reversing the direction there. Let's settle back to our tabletop position. So fingers spread wide, hands down. We're gonna brace through the belly. Right arm reaches up. In line with the body here, left leg kicks straight back. Okay, I'm looking for a straight line here. Try not to dump so much into my low back. I could lift my arm and my leg higher and you can see it kind of dumps into my low back here. So I'm gonna to try to roll my pelvis underneath. That straightens out my position just a little bit more here. And actually I feel more work being done by that back leg and uh, back of the right shoulder. Good. Now stay in this position here with your back leg lifted. Bend your right hand right elbow I should say, so that your right hand is just hovering behind the back of the head. Okay, not resting on it, but actually trying to hover off. Hope you see that in the side cam. Hey, thank you. Thanks for the follow there. I appreciate it. It hasn't popped up to say who it is yet, but I, I appreciate the follow. So we're hovering in this, we're externally rotating through the shoulder. Slowly reach that right arm forward. And as you bring that arm out to a T, turn the thumb downward. Can you see me there, Laura? Good. And then as I get down by my hip, the palm is now facing up towards the sky. I'm gonna re-bend my elbow. 
And just like I was behind the head, I'm hovering that hand off the back. This is active work here. It is not easy. Breathe. And the harder I push towards the sky, the more work I get out of the shoulders. So it's kind of like you reap what you sow here. You get in, you get out of it what you put in. Good. We're going to straighten that arm. It's down by your hip. As it comes to that T position, thumb down towards the floor. We're going to do that one more time. So I reach forward. I bend the elbow. I'm hovering that hand as high off of my head as I can. Leg is still up there. It's burning. I feel it. I'm sure you do too. Slowly reach that arm forward. Arm comes out to the side. Turn the thumb down. We're going to bend that elbow once we get to that hip. And we're just, it's like the, the knuckle side of the palm is hovering above the low back. Not easy to do here. Woo! Coming back home, straighten the elbow. Arm comes out to a T. Reach it out in front of us. And let's lower that hand and leg. Woo! My goodness. Let's go into our little child's pose. We're gonna widen the knees, bring the feet together, and just sit it back. This is a nice resting pose if you're ever doing yoga on your own. And um, this just can be a nice little mellow, mellow resting spot there. Let's see, I wanna see who, uh, who just followed me there. It's not showing me, but I wanna tell you thank you. So we're just breathing here. Oh, best day fitness. Thank you so much for the follow. <clears throat> We're going to do that whole little swimmer sequence on the other side. I told you we were going to focus on that upper body. Let's come up to tabletop again. Knees are right under the hips. We've got those hands directly under the shoulders. Left arm reaches up. Left leg, excuse me, right leg kicks back. And again, it's easy to lift these limbs and just dump right into the low back. But let's engage our abs here. Let's hollow through the belly. Try to keep that straight line there. And I'm even trying to actively scoop through the lowest part of the belly. So it becomes this, this little tug of war within my body in that I want to try to lift my arm and my leg but then I also want to scoop through the belly. So it's this constant like, try to lift, and then bring it, and the lift, and then bring it. Good. So we're just, we're just preheating the oven here, but we're gonna be doing our bacon here in just a sec. Slowly bend your left elbow. We're gonna hover that hand above the head. Okay. Hopefully you can see, is that coming through in the side cam there? Is it pretty clear? Yeah, good, hope so. Slowly straighten that left arm. It reaches out in front of you. As it swings over to the other side, out to a T, turn that thumb down. And then the arm comes down by your hip, palm to the sky, and then we bend the elbow. Hopefully you can see me here. Yes, it looks like I'm visible. So I'm trying to push the air up towards the sky. I'm trying to keep my hand as far off of my back as I can. That's where the work is done. Good. Straighten the arm. Slowly rotate out to a T. Thumb is down. And then out in front of you, thumb is up towards the sky. We re-bend the elbow. Hover it behind the head. Remember, we've got two of these here, so we're going to do this one more time. Keep that back leg kicking out. It's strong. Feel that booty starting to burn here. Straighten the arm. Bring the arm out to a T. Turn the thumb to the floor. Arm comes down by the hip, palm to the sky. Bending your elbow here. We're hovering that hand above the back. We're trying to push the air up to the sky, although the sky is air. Sounds a bit redundant. Holding here, keeping brace, keep lifting through that leg. We're almost done, straighten the arm. Arm comes back to the T and then overhead. Let's lower that down. Ah, let's sink back into our child's pose. 
So that drill there, by hovering those hands um, above the head and behind the head, we're, we're working active internal and external rotation of the shoulder. Let me come up close so you can see here. This is great. So we're active, we're going even further. Uh, that's the action here. And then when we're behind, uh, we're trying to push that away so we get even more rotation through the shoulder. That can help if you have some, some uh, nagging pains in the shoulder or the neck. It can be a really helpful move here for you. So from our child's pose, let us come up to all four again. We're gonna come into our puppy pose. So the thighs stay put. We just walk the hands forward. Long and strong. So I'm reaching my hands out. I'm pushing them down. Chest longing to touch the floor. All right. So I get this spinal extension. I'm trying to flatten my chin and chest to the ground. Hey, thanks, John, bro. Is it, uh, is it clearing up for you? Is the stream clearing up? I hope so. We're doing, uh, that was some active shoulder mobility there for anyone who's taking notes, keeping track. Good. <sighs> Wonderful. So let's come back up here. Do, 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 do. Let's take that right leg. Let's kick it out to the side. Just like a big old kickstand here. And you can see in this front cam, I've got my inner arch in line with my knee here. We're going to get really heavy through that hip. Oh, it didn't clear up, man. I'm sorry that my streams are so uh, choppy for you. I hope other people aren't experiencing that. Gina can tell me if she's feeling that same thing. So right hip drawn down and already we'll start to feel a little stretch through the inner arch there. Oh, Laura, nice little location change there. <laughs> I like it. So we're going to inhale, reach up through that right arm. And as you exhale, ah, we're going to thread it underneath. And landing. So this is just a gait variation. With this leg kicked out, I get a different stretch because we've locked the hips and then really isolated the rotation from the waistline up. Option to take that left hand and walk it out in front of you. Oh, thank you, John. I appreciate that. He says I'm teaching well and the stream's been a good class. Thank you, sir. I aim to educate on here and entertain. Edutain. So from this twist, feel your right arm kind of pressing down into the floor like you're trying to tack it to the ground. And then imagine trying to pull your body away from that tacked arm. It's a subtle cue. It may not make sense, um, but we'll keep trying it. You know, sometimes we'll cue things and they're, they're subtle and they kind of require you to, to level up in your body awareness first before they kind of make sense. So sometimes it's for certain people who are a little more advanced or are used to these. Um, and it's okay if a cue just goes over your head. They, <laughs> they still do for me sometimes when I go to yoga classes. Let's bring that right, excuse me, that left hand back under you. Bring yourself up to all fours. We're going to bring that right knee in, and we'll switch sides. Left leg broop, kicks out. Nice. Yeah, this will be an interesting view here. Side view, awesome. Side view is clear. So with that left leg out, notice that where we land when we, when we kick that leg out, that hip, that left hip is a little hiked up into the air. So let's get really heavy with it, wrap it down, and feel that little inner thigh stretch that opens up. Taking your left arm, we're going to reach it up, breathing it, exhale, big thread underneath, and we're going to land. Sometimes we floss that, but today we're just going to land. So now you can see here, sometimes it's just nice to use this right hand, this bent elbow, to just push into the floor and leverage you a little bit deeper into the twist. Some may prefer to just, you know, like the, what's that hand in the Adams Family thing, thing that, I just imagine that, that little, that hand walk. 
up to the top of the mat here. And I just get a little bit of a different type of a stretch, which feels good for me. So I'm going to stay here. So there's some downward pressure of that left arm down into the ground as if you're trying to tack it to the floor. And we're going to try to drag the back away from it. So and you won't even really see it happening in my body. It's, it's like I said, it's a real subtle cue. But what, what we're aiming for is to try to feel a sensation of stretch that's a little bit more out of the shoulder blade, specifically that left shoulder blade. And again, whenever we feel uh, tight, restricted, then uh, we, we um, thank you for the follow. Whoever that was, I'll see in a moment and give you a proper shout out. We're just trying to see how much space that we can open up here and breathe. That's what I was talking about. Sorry, the, my alert just uh, threw me off. But when we feel tight, constricted, uh, we can come back to that. A nice, controlled, long breathing to really settle. Finding steadiness and ease in these poses. Bring that right hand back if you reached it out in front of you. And we're coming up. Good. Let's see. Let me give a proper shout out here. Danny Yogani, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Hopefully you're, uh, you're joining in. If not, just uh, thank you for hanging out. Much appreciated. Okay, so we are... Probably feeling pretty loose. Let's, uh, you can even just kind of revisit those shoulder circles that we started with. This stuff should feel a little bit more open for you. And since we are about halfway through the class and we haven't even felt a down dog, let's feel a downward facing dog, shall we? So hands plant really wide, uh, sping fingers spread, <laughs> fingers spread. All those spoonerisms. And we're going to shift the hips up and back. If this is your first one for a while or in a while, let the knees soften a little bit. Heels do not need to be anywhere near the floor, as long as you're feeling stuff. What does that stuff feel like? I don't know. Stretch along the back of the calves here, up the hamstrings. And just find that breath here. Settle. In some yoga classes, the teachers will say, this is a resting pose. And when you're just starting yoga, downward dog does not feel like a resting pose. Uh, it feels like a lot of work and your body's yelling at you. Over time, as you practice and as you stay consistent with it, um, this does become a, a position that feels more at home. One more breath here. Good. Exhale. We're going to bend the knees. We're looking forward. You can pounce forward, or like I'm going to do, I'm just going to tiptoe my feet up to the top of the mat. Doop, 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 doop. Good. Forward fold. Let the head, let the arms, everything just hang. Let gravity do its thing. You may prefer to grab opposite elbows. I like to add in a gentle little sway side to side. <sighs> Even a head shake, yes and no, can feel really nice in this little mini inversion in that our head is below our heart here. So we don't have the normal compressional forces pushing down on us here in the neck, which can be really, really nice. Even if you're in a chair, you could sit forward, kind of like let your body drape over your thighs, and you could get something similar to this if you're just kind of watching at your desk. You know, sometimes we can modify this stuff to make it work in a chair. It's all good. Okay. Releasing those elbows if you have them clasped. We're going to bring the hands up to the shins and lift up halfway. Normally, we're only here for a breath, but we're going to stay put. So I'm looking to straighten out my spine. So if you need to, invite a little bit more of a bend into the knees so that we can really get a little bit more arching out of the back here. Okay, I'm going to draw my chin down. I'm looking straight down at the ground. 
so that my neck is long and in line with my whole back. I mean, that's the goal. If you don't know what it looks like, just, just imagine it in your head. See if you can, you can mimic that in your body, okay? Visualization goes a long way. So we're holding this position. We'll maybe feel a stretch out of the hamstrings. We're gonna take that right arm, thumb up to the sky, reach it out in one long line. Good. Now you can stay with one arm here. If you feel extra strong today, you can go both arms. In line with the body, I'm really trying to stay as flat as possible. I don't know if I'm totally straight, but I'm just trying to imagine that from my fingertips all the way to my tailbone, I'm one straight line that's as parallel to the floor as possible. One more breath here. Exhale, ah, just release into that forward fold. And then we'll inhale, rise all the way up to standing arms, big sweep up towards the sky. And exhale. Ah. Good. Let's just kind of shake the body out here. We're going to do that again on the other side if you only took one arm up. If you want both arms, we'll get another chance to do it again. Good. So let's inhale. Sweep the arms up. Reach up towards the sky. Folding forward as you breathe out. Good. Inhale. Hands to the shins. Here we are again. We have arrived again. You have reached your destination. So again, soften the knees so that we can feel more arch of the spine. This time that left arm goes up. Only if you went one side last time. If you went the full Monty last time, both arms up. Here we have it again. So the cue I like to use is I'm trying to get my, my arms to disappear out of my peripheral vision. If I can't see them, it tells me that they are in more in line with my ear and it's a lot harder I can tell you that two more breaths breathe it in breathe it out big upper body focus today inhale and exhale release into your forward fold inhale come all the way up big sweep of the arms to standing and exhale good Let's just shake out the hips, shake out the arms. Do, do, do. How's everyone feeling? Everyone good today? Yeah, we got some thumbs up on Zoom. Hopefully you guys are enjoying and following along on Twitch. I do this class every Tuesday, Thursday. Whoop, whoop, whoop. In various locations. We just move this a little bit more. There we go. You can see that the, the, the sun is creeping up on me. It is very warm out here today. So let's go. Uh, let's go feet either touching or just hip distance apart. It doesn't need to be super long. Am I in the side cam? Perfect. I'm going to take my hands, interlace them behind the back. Okay? I should go this way, huh? As I push my knuckles to the floor, I'm going to broaden across the shoulder blades. Or excuse me, the collarbones there. Take an inhale. Exhale. Forward fold. Oh. Letting those fists just fall away from the tailbone here. I like to move my neck around just to see, not whipping it, but just kind of exploring different angles. When we have our shoulders bound in this kind of uh, shoulder extended position, it can add some little new dynamics to your neck stretch. So I invite you to maybe go ear to shoulder. Yes and no. See if there's any new neck stretch sensations that you might notice. Again, this can work in the chair. If you're following along from the chair. Okay. Let's bring the fist back to the tailbone, which will start to prop you up. Ah, releasing the hands there. Let's get back down into our down dogs. We'll flow to get down there though. Inhale. We're going to sweep the arms up. We're feeling the rib cage expand. We're getting taller. Exhale. <sighs> You're folding forward. Inhale, lifting halfway up. We're just here for a breath, but we know what to do now. Exhale, bend the knees to plant hands. You can step into your plank. If you know a full vinyasa, you can do that. Otherwise, we're going to take it a little more intermediate, which is knees first, then chest and chin drop down. 
As you inhale, slide forward and up. So the belly flattens, but the chest lifts. Let's hold here for a moment. So tops of the feet are pressing down into the floor. Hands can help to push the chest a little bit higher. So we'll feel some of the upper back muscles. But to make this a little bit more challenging, you have the option to float the hands off the ground. Try to maintain the same amount of lift through the chest. And that's where it gets a little bit challenging. <sighs> Bonus points here. If we squeeze the elbows into the midline, we'll probably feel more muscular activation here. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Good. Forehead to the floor. We're going to push back into our downward facing dog. <clears throat> And breathe here. Feel those breaths. Full inhales. Long exhales. Make them luxurious. Hmm. May even feel nice here as you inhale. You can open the mouth. Ah. I'll let out a nice sigh there. Good, good, good. So from your down dog, let's open the feet as wide as your mat. And we're going to walk the hands backwards, and we're going to come into a little bit of a yoga squat, malasana. Thank you for the follow. Let me see who it was. Your black knight. Thank you for the follow. Thanks for checking it out. I do this class every Tuesday, Thursday at noon Pacific. So we're in our yoga squat here. Heels, eventually we want to get them to the floor. It is okay if they're off the ground for right now. Uh, if there's any pain in your knees, um, we can just kind of have the hips up a little bit higher, or you can just be in kind of a forward fold movement. So <clears throat> from your squat position, hands in prayer position. Elbows are wedged between the thighs here, and we pry those knees open. Yes. And Gina, I can see you there. You got a little bit of a, a hunch forward. What we're doing from, from this position is then trying to get that chest nice and high. Beautiful. That was the perfect correction there. So it takes a little bit more effort to go from kind of a hunched position to a little more active straight spine. Good. So we're going to do a couple of walkouts. We've done this a few times in my class. Not sure if you ladies have been here for this. We're going to take the hands to the ground. And we're walking our body out to that top of the plank position. Squeezing the thighs, squeezing the butt once we get there. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, we're going to bend the knees. Keep them hovering low to the ground. Walk ourselves back to that squatted position here. We're going to do this about five or 800 times. Um, so this is going to end up being like a 24-hour stream. <laughs> <laughs> I saw your face, Laura, like, what kind of crazy talk? But just try it. Feel how controlled you can make it. So as you start to walk the hands out, now the arms and the core fire up. You can hold your plank for a little bit longer. You can do some plank add-ons by lifting a leg or tapping a shoulder before you walk it back. A lot of options here. Good. And if you want to keep it real easy, you can just go from your squat and you could just pounce right into a handstand. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's super advanced. I'm just feeling a little feisty today. I don't teach a lot of handstands in my class, but I think I should there. So we'll do one more, one or two more of these, and we're going to build on this before we wrap up and calm things down a little bit. Do, 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 do. Nice. I'm gonna do one more here and then we'll rest in child's pose when you've had your fill. So I, I like the name Yoga Playground for my class because I'm not super strict about everything that we're teaching. I like to create a little bit of a sandbox where I'm kind of showing you some things. <coughs> Pardon me but giving you some freedom to explore on your own. 
you know, to play a little bit in your body. Good. Let's rest for a moment in child's pose. So I'm going to drop my knees. They're wide. Bring my feet together to touch. And we stretch. Wonderful. So we're going to do a little bit of, of animal flow from here. I'm going to describe it as you're kind of still resting in your, um, in your child's pose. So you can look up, you can watch, you can see what's going on. But we're going to kind of build off of that squatted position here. So we pop back up to our yoga squat. Totally fine. Again, if you're up on your, uh, the balls of your feet, it's okay. Where we go from here? I'm at the very back of my mat, and I'm going to aim my hands about halfway up the mat. And we're going to do a little leapfrogging action here. So I'm going to hands plant. I'm going to feel my weight shift, and I'm going to try to slowly hop my feet to the outside of my hands. And feel that squat again. Then my next point is the top of the mat. Same deal. And I hop it. Okay? Once we get to the top of the mat, we can go backwards with this. Hands plant just between my feet. I shift weight forward. I kick my feet back. And I rock back to that squat. Again, hands right between the feet. Shift forward. Kick the feet back. And push myself. So the goal with these is to try to get as smooth in your hops as possible. As you gain strength, body awareness, um, and mobility, you can start to really slow them down. Sometimes you could even get the hips really, really high there. Okay, A little harder to do it on your way back. But there are ways if you do, if you are a crazy handstander, you could start to stack hips and slowly come down. I mean, those are, those are more like party tricks than expecting everybody to be able to do that. But just to kind of show you where those pieces can take you uh, if you practice that and if you're consistent with that. Okay? So, where are we on time? Perfect. Let's get to the top of your mat in your squat. And then I'm just going to do like a little rollback. <laughs> I'm onto my back there. I didn't say it was gonna be graceful, but it sure as heck is fun. So we're gonna come into our malasana, excuse me, our, uh, yeah, our plow pose here. So I'm gonna take my legs up into the air. I'm gonna use a combination of me pushing into the floor and a little momentum of my, of my legs to bring the legs up and over my body. Now, if this does not feel good on your neck, your shoulders, you can do just a forward fold, and it'll, it'll work just as well for us, okay? But for our plow pose, whoops, we're up and over. You can use your hands to support your low back. Because there's going to be a certain point where if you're feeling stiff, your body won't, it'll want to roll out of this position. So we can use these hands to kind of prop under the hips and get them up and over. Over time, once you have the flexibility, those legs come over enough where you're just kind of supported. But that might be a lot on your body there, so don't force it. If there's pain, we can back off. If there continues to be pain, we can just wait. I'm feeling a little tight today because sometimes my feet can go all the way to the ground. So it's always worth mentioning that every time we come and practice either yoga or weightlifting or running, or whatever it is, every day is a little different. So one day maybe you can do a lot, and then the next day or the next week, you just can't quite do that. So we just have a little bit of compassion for ourselves and just accept where we are in that moment. And then that starts to carry over to other aspects of our life where we just have a little bit more acceptance of ourselves and of other people. And that's where the practice of yoga starts to bleed into other areas of your life. 
We're slowly coming down here. I like to put my hands down and make it an ab, uh, an ab challenge by trying to see how slowly I can lower my spine to the floor. You can hear the strain in my voice. I'm using my abs to slowly unroll and I'm gonna bring myself up to a seated position. Okay, legs are gonna be out in front of you here. We'll do a little bit of forward folding here as we kind of wind things down. Let's inhale, reach the arms nice and tall. Exhale, we'll fold forward here. And I'm letting my back really round forward, as you can see in that side view. Feels really good up the back. And even from this forward fold, as I tuck my chin in even tighter, I can feel that stretch go up the back of my head and down my spine just a little as we kind of tighten the whole system. And if you have any questions about any of this stuff, um, if you're following along on Twitch, uh, just a question about getting started in yoga or um, maybe some, some any other question, I'm going to be hanging out for probably another hour after class doing Q&A and demoing specific poses and stuff for people. So hang out. So what I like to do here is in this forward fold, and I've kind of rounded my head in, I feel this taut line of stretch. It feels like a warm sensation that goes down the spine. Maybe you've felt that when you're uh, just coming out of, um, just waking up, right? And you haven't really moved your body yet. You go into that stretch and there's like this hot stretch sensation. So from that position, we're gonna get into the maximum stretch and really fill up with your inhale. Try to breathe into the back of your rib cage. Send your breath there. I like to hold it. And then soften there. So we're, we're essentially using the expansion of your breath to create a stretch from the inside out versus what we're doing here. We're externally stretching kind of from the outside in, but we can use that breath to kind of as a double whammy, a one-two punch. Good. So let's inhale to come up. We're gonna bring just the right knee into the chest and let that knee open out to the side. I'm actually gonna open up a little bit wider here because we're gonna take this into a bit of a side bend. So the left arm is gonna bend. That elbow is gonna wedge itself on the inside of that thigh there. And as I push my elbow into my thigh, I'm actually able to, to kind of roll my chest to the right side here. And that's this is setting us up for our side bend. Once we've got, gained some of that leverage, to open up into that twist, then the right arm can come up and over into that side bend there. Ooh, nice little crack out of the neck. Really good. And you don't have to touch your foot. I'm not quite there yet, and that's okay. Again, I'm just accepting where I am today. I'm grateful for what my body can do. You know, because there's always somebody that can do more than you. But you know what? There's always somebody that their bodies maybe can't, that don't allow them to do what you can do. So we can just appreciate what's available to us. And again, we use the breath here. I'm trying to use the breath to expand into the right side of the rib cage. <sighs> Excellent. Let's come back up. Woo! 
Ooh, that's feeling nice. Let's straighten the right leg. Let's switch it up. Bring the left knee into the body. Take that out to the side. So we got our side bend. We're going to set up for it. So we take that right arm, that right elbow. I feel like I'm doing WWE. Like, yeah. It's going to plant on the inside of that right thigh. Yes. And as we open that arm out, we can rotate the chest to the left. That's where our side bend happens. Oh. So it's a double action. I'm reaching out. I'm reaching towards my toes with my left hand. I'm using my right elbow to, to pry myself into a more twisted position. Or I should say, I'm, I'm opening my chest more towards the sky. And that gives me more of a sensation of stretch along the side body. It may, I may not be as close, right? If I allow my chest to aim towards the floor, I can actually connect. I can touch my, my left hand and my right toes. But as I open my chest, as if I'm looking under my right armpit, uh-oh, now I'm not quite as close. However, I'm getting much more of a side body stretch. So it's, it's kind of like, what, what is it that you're after? Are you just trying to touch the toe? Great, do that. But then ask yourself, why? What is my intention there? Am I getting as much as I could by touching the toe? Or if I'm honest with myself and, and really refine my position, I actually am further from the toe, but I'm getting more out of the pose. Again, we use our breath here. We're filling into the left rib cage. We can hold it there. And exhale, soften. Oh, I'm even a little closer. Sometimes that exhale breath softens us into these poses. Oh, hey, Panda, welcome back. We're just uh, finishing up class, and then I'm going to be doing a little Q&A afterwards, so I'll be hanging out. Let's come up, right? Ah, wonderful. Let's go into our... Um, what pose do I... How much time do we have? I just wanted to do a little bit of a, a shoulder stretch. Let's go into bound angle pose via the legs here. And this is just to kind of give us a little hip stretch, but our main focus is going to be the upper body here. I should go into the middle of the uh, middle of the frame here. So just a, a little bit of the eagle arms. Yeah, we got little flutters of the butterfly there. I like that, Laura. So we're going to take our right hand. It's going to go underneath the left arm. Yeah, we're going to do eagle, right? So. We can kind of spring the arms together. They can wrap once and then twice, but this might be a lot for you. So we can always do right arm under and just hug that arm. Okay, so this is a little bit more mellow, still giving us that stretch across the back. But if you can bend the arm and then hook fingertips on the forearms, that would be, that'll give us a little bit more. From this position here, elbows lift up and they push away from the body here. I like to tuck my chin in with this and I get these really cool stretches up the, uh, up the, the front of the neck by the collarbone, um, but it could be a little different for you. And again, this is, uh, if you're in a desk or if you're in a chair right here, you can totally do the upper body variations here. This is, this is chair friendly. It's kind of cool with uh, with people watching on Twitch. You know, not everybody's doing the yoga on their mat, so it's nice to begin to think about. Oh, what can what can be adapted into a chair? Even if you want to just do a stretch or a breath here and there, you can do little bits of yoga, and you're still doing it. Good. Let's release the arms there. Let's just circle the shoulders forward and back. Feel some more freedom, and then we'll even it out. If you want to change the orientation, we did this on Tuesday. We can just open the heels out, create a bigger diamond here. Just a little bit of a different stretch. Yeah, Laura, if you if you prefer a wide-legged, I saw you go out into the wide-legged. If you want to do that for the left side, totally fine there. You got this really like angelic light coming up on you there. <laughs> I see. Uh, I can see her on Zoom. So we're going to do the other side. That left arm is going to go underneath the right arm. Okay. And then the, the first one here is just hugging that arm to your chest. 
and that's just a nice little stretch here. The eagle arms uh, happens when you wrap for a second time. So that right arm bends. I'm trying to wrap my fingers around my wrist here. Once we've got that double bind, elbows lift up and away. Up and away. Diamond pose, yeah. It, this is a nice one. It's a good stretch for the hips. Probably, it would probably work for you, Panda. Uh, I think this would be knee friendly. The knee bend isn't too extreme. Oh yeah, this is um, Panda saying my, my background looks different. This is actually the gym that I work at. We have a very large outdoor space, uh, which is allowing us to operate right now. We're in uh, Northern California, so we're actually in phase three. So, so gyms technically are reopened, but even before that we were able to operate because we have this big outdoor space. Yeah, you've sat like this before. Nice. Let's unwind the arms. We're going to recline onto our backs. Uh, we're going to do a little twisting through the spine and get ready for our final Shavasana, our resting pose. So as we get into our backs, we'll lie down onto the back there. You work at a gym. Yes, I am. A, I'm a full-time personal trainer. Um, yoga is kind of secondary for me, but I did get my yoga certification, um, and I've been teaching yoga since 2014. Um, but I love bridging the two worlds between fitness and yoga. And, and that's why you'll see some like strength influence stuff that shows up in my yoga classes. So let's get into some twists. I just need a little bit of water because it's warm out here today. It's probably in the high 70s. What would you say? I don't know what that is in Celsius. Laura, maybe you can help me out. <laughs> no, see, I saw her lip. No. <laughs> so let's go into our eagle twist. We did the eagle wrap with our le with our arms, um, but for our twist, we're gonna do the same thing with the legs. So we're gonna over the left, and that can be just one wrap. If you can get the right toes behind the calf, it takes a little bit more hip mobility, but it can really provide a nice stretch here. So I'm gonna scooch my hips over to the right side of my mat and allow my whole body to fall over to the left. Boom. Then my right arm comes up and over and we're settling. If this is too much, feel free to just pull both your knees into your chest and drop them to the left. You don't have to do the leg wrap. It just adds some intensity to the twist. And here's where we can really find our way back to that nice, deep, long breathing that we started with. If we kind of, if it went away from us. As we're starting to calm things down. I like to imagine and feel in my body where I'm most limited in this twist. I can feel a little hip soreness from my run yesterday that's, that's kind of bleeding up into my low back. So I'm going to send my inhale there. I'm going to breathe into, try to breathe into this space. And as I exhale long and slow, just imagine this part of my body softening and just giving in. Good. Let's take our twist over to the other side. Nice and slow. Don't need to rush out of this here at all. Oh, that didn't come through here. The stream is going well as long as I don't touch anything on your computer. All right, John, bro, that's your yoga practice. Don't touch anything, and then my stream will come through clear for you. Excellent. Let's just go over to the other side. So this time, that left leg wraps around the right leg once, high up on the thigh, and then the second one is when we bend both knees, and I can actually try to hook my toes behind my calf. This did not come easily to me at first, especially because I have kind of thicker thighs. I really had to work on my hip mobility for this to be available to me. So if it doesn't work in your body, no, no need to judge yourself there. Again, we just accept where we are. So my knees are going to fall over to the right. 
left arm reaches up and over. Yes, it's a great hip stretch, John Bro. It's nice because the the eagle legs brings the hip stretch into our spinal rotation too. And what actually is the benefit of, of setting the legs up like this is it locks the hips into place. So the rotation is actually happening a little bit more up the spine. When we just have knees into the chest like this and we open up, the knees begin to shear away. And so that the hips have been drawn into the, the rotation a little bit. It's not wrong, but the wrap of the legs just gives us a more intense twist through the body. Kind of anchors that helps to anchor the hips. So notice where you feel tight. And again, same kind of pattern for me on this side. My hips are sore from yesterday's run. So I'm going to try imagine sending my breath down into that space. Of course, I don't have lungs down in my hips, but it's just kind of this visualization that we can hone in on as we inhale, expand, 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 and uh, let it all go with that exhale. Excellent. We're going to prepare for our final savasana. That's the thick thigh saves life phrase. <laughs> yeah, Laura, the, the, they were saying uh, thick thighs saves lives. So just, just so you know, I, I'm, I'm part of the thick thigh club, apparently. My, my mobility will really help in BJJ. Yes, absolutely. I've noticed that that has helped me already in in my early stages of learning Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I'm very new to it, but I come with that flexibility already like flexibility plus five, which is quite nice. So we're gonna get into our final Shavasana. This is gonna be a few minutes of just really quiet time. Um, if you're practicing with me, we'll lay the body down nice and long. If you're in the chair, just kind of watching along, you can use this as a few moments to close your eyes and just focus on your breathing. It'll be like a mini meditation for you. And you don't have to, but I just invite you if you would like to, uh, to be in this. <coughs> so find a position that's comfortable, either lying down or sitting. And if, it's, if it feels right, you can close your eyes. Now, if you were practicing the yoga Typically in Shavasana, we just let the body breathe on its own. So the breathing becomes much smaller and we become an observer. Now, if you're sitting in your chair and just doing a small meditation during this time, you can continue to work on your really long inhale and a long exhale. We're going to use this, these few moments here to just notice what you feel in your body. Maybe you can start to identify that monkey mind is sometimes what it's called. All the thoughts that are kind of bouncing around in your head. And the practice of meditation isn't necessarily calming that monkey mind not not quieting the mind necessarily it's just becoming aware that it's there and that it's always going crazy and that if you give your body a little task like just think about the inhale and the exhale you can kind of get to a state that is that is right here and now you're breathing in this moment you're not worrying about taxes or going to the grocery store or what somebody said to you last week. You're just right here thinking about your breath in this absolute present moment. So the mind will wander. 
And when we notice it wandering, we just bring it back to thinking about the breath. In the same way we can get stronger by lifting weights, we can gain focus by just training our mind to just come back to a spot. No matter how many times you have to go, hey, that's a wandering thought, bring it back. That's okay, those are our reps. And that's what gets us better. So consider that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go mute for a few moments so that you can be with that. Start to feel your breath deepening here. And slowly moving the fingers and toes, just bringing movement back into the body. Whether you're lying on the ground or sitting in a chair, we can reach the arms up overhead. Take a big breath in as you stretch the body. Open the mouth, stick out the tongue really long. One more time. Inhale, big stretch. From lying down, you can bring the knees into your chest. Allow the body to roll to one side. Nice. We're going to come up to that seated position. I'm going to bring it in close. Bring it in close. Hey, guys. I'm going to end with three rounds of Om. It's just a nice little vocal chant. Um, it doesn't need to mean anything to you. Some say it's kind of the sound of the universe. Um, for me, I like the feeling of the vi vibration through my body. In, in the context of a class, it's really cool when everybody's together and we're oming at the same time because we're, we're moving together in that we're moving air to create sound. So it's just a um, It's kind of a shape that changes. Um, you can join in with me. You can just enjoy the sounds. Um, it's totally up to you. We'll do three ohms, and then I'll be hanging out for some Q&A and chatting with you guys. So we can either have hands in prayer, or they can be down on your thighs in a seated position. We can close the eyes, sitting up nice and tall. Let's take a breath in. Breathe everything out. Inhale for our first ohm. Ah. so much.